Hello everybody, I am Dr. Armen, Armen Astvatsatrian, professor from Yerevan, Armenia, and today we will talk about cardiac auscultation. Okay, so cardiac auscultation. Auscultation of the heart requires good, maybe excellent hearing, uh, the ability to distinguish subtle differences in pitch and timing. Hearing impaired healthcare practitioners, uh, <coughs> health, uh, hearing impaired healthcare practitioners can use amplified stethoscopes. High-pitched sounds are best he heard with here heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Diaphragm. So once again, uh, high-pitched sounds are best heard with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. Low pitch sounds are best heard with the bell, just the bell, okay? Very little pressure should be exerted when using the bell. Excessive pressure converts the underlying skin into a diaphragm and eliminates very low pitch sounds. The entire precordium is examined systematically, typically beginning of the epically of the apical impulse with the patient in the left lateral discubitus position. Discubitus position. The patient rolls supine and auscultation continues as the lower left sternal border. Precedes cephalite with, aus cephalite with auscultation of each interspace and the caudat from the right upper sternal border. The clinician also listens over the left axilla and above the clavicles. The patient sits upright for auscultation of the back, then lairs forward to aid auscultation of aortic and pulmonic diastolic murmurs or pericardial uh, friction rub. So major, uh, the major auscultatory, auscultatory findings include heart sounds, murmurs, rubs. Heart sounds are brief, Transient sounds produced by valve opening and closure. They are divided into systolic and diastolic sounds. Murmurs are produced by, flood, uh, by blood flow, turbulence, and are more prolonged than hard sounds. They may be systolic, diastolic, or continuous. They are graded by intensity and are described by their location and when they occur within the cardiac cycles. Uh, murmurs are graded in intensity on a scale of 1 to 6. So I'll put all these uh, tables, and visual guide, uh, visual uh, data into another presentation that will call so visual guide to this uh, our cardiac auscultation. So don't forget to follow them to see that uh, movie. So, uh, cardiac auscultation visual guide, okay? So, I put the hyperlink here. Okay, uh, raps are high-pitched uh, high scratchy sounds, often with two or three separate components. During tachycardia, the sound may be almost continuous. We talk about now raps, huh? The clinician focuses attention sequentially on each pulse, on each uh, not pulse on each phase of the cardiac cycle, noting each uh, noting noting each heart sound and murmur. Intensity, pitch, duration, and timing of the sounds and the intervals between them are analyzed, often providing an accurate diagnosis. Uh, a diagram of the major auscultatory and palpatory uh, findings of the precordium should be routinely drawn in the patient's chart each time the patient, the patient's cardiovascular system uh, is examined. So uh, also I'll put them all in visual guide. Huh? So I advise you to follow this movie, this movie too. Uh, with such diagrams, findings from each examination can be compared. Systolic heart sounds. Systolic heart sounds include the following. First heart sound, S1. So that's why S. 
ha, sisterly card sound, clicks. S1 and second hard sound, so S2, a diastolic hard sound, are normal components of cardiac cycle. The family lab dip sounds, lip dip, lip dip, 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 lip dip, lip dip, lip dip, lip dip, okay? This is normal. S1 occurs just after the beginning of systole and is predominantly due to mitral closure, but may also include tricuspid closure components. It's often split and has a high pitch. Uh, S1 is allowed in uh, mitral stenosis. It may be soft or absent in mitral regurgitation due to valve leaflet sclerosis and rigidity, but it's often distinctly heard in mitral regurgitation due to uh, myxomatosis, the generation of the mitral ap apparatus, or due to ventricle myocardial abnormality, for example, papillary muscle dysfunction, you know, ventricular ventricular uh, dilation. Uh, clicks, uh, clicks occur only during systole. That is why it's called click. They are di uh, distinguished from S1, S2 by the higher pitch and brief duration. Some clicks occur at different times during systole as hemodynamic change. Clicks may be single or multiple. Clicks or in, congenital, in congenital aortic pulmonary, pulmonic stenosis are thought to result from abnormal ventricle wall tension. Uh, these clicks occur early in systole, early in systole, very near S1, and are not affected by hemodynamic, hemodynamic changes. Similar clicks occur in severe pulmonary hypertension. Clicks in mitral tric or tricuspid valve prolapse typically occurring in mid to late systole are sought to result from abnormal tension or redundant and elongated cord tendine or valve leaflets. Uh, clicks due to myxomatosis degeneration of valves may occur any time during systole but move toward S1 during maneuvers that transiently decreasing ventricle filling volume, for example standing, Valsalva maneuver, it uh, Valsalva maneuver. It, if ventricle filling volume is increased, for example, by lying supine, uh, clicks uh, clicks move toward S2, particularly in mitral valve prolapse. <coughs> For unknown reasons, characteristics of the clicks may vary greatly between examinations, at, and clicks may come and go. So I will put you and I will show you. Systolic heart sounds, uh, be careful, S1 splitting is normal in many patients and, uh, and is thought to be caused by mitral valve closure followed by an aortic ejection sound. So, so now we will uh, listen S1, okay? I'll try to put it. Once again, please. With arrhythmia huh? and plus. Split first heart sound. This was split first heart sound. Mm -hmm. Okay, this was S1 splitting. This S1 splitting is normal. Okay? Split. So, that's enough for S1. Uh, now about uh, diastolic heart sounds. Diastolic sounds include the following, second, third, and fourth heart sounds. So, S2, S3, S4 sound. Uh, S is sound, uh, not systolic, sorry. Uh, S2, S3, and S4. So diastolic knocks, mitral valve sounds. Uh, so uh, unlike systolic sounds, diastolic sounds are low pitched. They are softer in intensity and longer in duration. Except for <coughs> sound 2, S2. These sounds are usually abnormal in adults. 
although an S3 may be physiologic up to age 40 and during pregnancy. S2 occurs at the beginning of diastole due to aortic and pulmonary valve closure. Aortic valve closure, A2, normally precedes pulmonic valve closure, P2, uh, unless the former is late or the later is early. Uh, aortic valve closure is late in left bundle branch block or aortic stenosis. Pulmonary valve closure is early in some forms of pre-excitation phenomena. Delayed pulmonic valve closure may be result from increased blood flow through the right ventricle, for example, in atrial septal defect of the common secundum, uh, secundum variety or complete right bundle branch block. Increased right ventricle flow in atrial septal defect also uh, abolishes the normal respiratory uh, variation in aortic and pulmonary valve closure, producing a, a fixed split S2. Left to right shunts with normal right ventricle volume flow, for example in membranous, ventr membranous ventricular septal defect, do not cause fixed splitting. A single S2 may occur when the aortic valve is regurgitant, severe stenotic or, arter art or arthritic, arthritic in truncus arterios, arteriosus when there is a common valve. Huh? Now we will try to listen diastolic heart sounds, sounds of that is of paradoxal splitting, for example S1, P2, A2 at rest, out and S1, S2 with inspiration in. Left bundle branch block delays aortic valve closure so that split is audible at rest. Inspiration decreases intrathoracic pressure drawing more blood into the right ventricle and postponing, postponing uh, pulmonic valve closure until it's su superimposed on A2 and splitting becomes inaudible. Right, okay, I'll try to put it. So, split second heart sound in left bundle branch block. Let's go. Out. In. Okay, once again, please. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Okay, split second hard sound in left bundle branch block. Out. In. Out. In. Out. In. Okay, thanks. S3 occurs in early diastole when the ventricle is dilated and non-compliant. It occurs during a passive diastolic ventricular filling and usually indicates serious ventricular dysfunction in adults. So once again, S3 occurs in early diastole when the ventricle is dilated and non-compliant, is dilated, it couldn't be compliant. So S3 occurs during passive diastolic ventricle filling and usually indicates uh, and indicates uh, serious ventricular dysfunction in adults. In children, it can be normal, sometimes persisting even to age 40, 40, 40. S3 also may be normal during pregnancy. Right ventricle S3 is heard best sometimes only during inspiration, because negative intrathoracic pressure augments right ventricle filling volume with the patient's supine. Left ventricle S3 is best heard during expiration, because the heart is uh, nearer the chest wall. Expiration. Huh? Uh, with the patient is, is in the left lateral decubitus position. S4 produced by augmented ventricle filling caused by atrial contraction near the end of diastole. It's similar to S3 and a heart best or only with the bell on the, of the stethoscope. During inspiration, right ventricle S4 increases and left ventricle S4 decreases. S4 is 
heard much more often than S3 and indicates a lesser degree of ventricle dysfunction, usually diastolic. S4 is absent in atrial fibrillation because the atria do not contract, but it's almost always present in active myocardial ischemia or soon after myocardial infarction. Uh, S3, with or without S4, is usually is uh, in significant systolic left ventricular dysfunction. S4 without S3 is, uh, is usual in diastolic left ventricle dysfunction. A summation gallop occurs uh, when S3 and S4 are present in a patient with tachycardia which shortens diastole so that the two sounds uh, merge loud loud S3 and S4 may be palpable at the apex when the patient is in the left lateral decubitus position. And diastolic knock occurs at the same time as S3 in early diastole. It's not accompanied by S4 and is a louder the thudding sound, which indicates abrupt arrests of ventricle filling by a non-complicant constricting pericardium. An opening snap Opening snap, opening snap, may occur in early diastole in mitral stenosis or rarely in tricuspid stenosis. Mitral opening snap is very high pitched, brief. Uh, what are what I'm talking about? Mitral opening snap is very high pitched, brief and hard, best with the diaphragm of the stethoscope. The more severe mitral stenosis, for example, the higher and left atrial pressure, uh, the closure and uh, the closure, the opening snap is to the pulmonary component of S2. Huh? Uh, intensity of is related to compl uh, to the compliance of the valve leaflets. The snap sounds loud when leaflets remain elastic, but it gradually softens and ultimately disappears as sclerosis, fibrosis and calcification of the valve develop. Mitral opening snap, although sometimes hard at the apex, is often hard best or only at the lower left sternal border. Timing of the murmur in the cardiac cycles of uh, cycle correlates with the cause I'll put the, the etiology of murmurs by timing in a visual guide. So, auscultory findings correlate with specific heart valve disorders. Various maneuvers, example, for example, inspiration, valsalva, hand grips, squatting, uh, amyl nitrite, amyl nitrate inhalation can modify cardiac physiology slightly, making differentiation of causes of heart murmurs possible. So, also put them in a visual guide. Huh? All patients with uh, heart murmurs are evaluated by chest X-ray and ele electrocardiography and uh, require echocardiography, most require echocardiography to confirm the diagnosis, determine severity and track severity over time. Usually a cardiac consultation is obtained if significant disease is suspected. Systolic murmurs may be normal or abnormal. They may be early, mild, or late systolic, or holo holosystolic, or pan-systolic. Systolic murmurs may be divided into injection, regurgitant, and shunt murmurs. Ejection murmurs are due to turbulent forward flow th th through narrowed or irregular valves or outflow tracts, for example, due to aortic stenosis or pulmonic stenosis. They are typically and systolic, uh, mild, uh, mid-systolic, and have a crescendo, diminuendo the character that usually becomes louder and longer as flow becomes more obstructed. The greater the stenosis and turbulence, the longer the crescendo phase uh, and the shorter the diminuendo phase. Systolic ejection murmurs may occur without hemodynamically significant outflow tract obstruction and thus do not necessarily indicate a disorder in normal infants and children. Flow is often uh, mildly turbulent, producing soft ejection murmurs. The elderly often have ejection murmurs due to valve and val valve sclerosis. So during pregnancy, many women uh, soft, have soft ejection murmurs and the second intercostal, intercostal space to the left or right 
of the sternum. The murmurs occur because of physiologic increase in blood volume and cardiac output increases flow velocity through normal structures. The murmurs may be greatly exaggerated if severe anemia complicates the pregnancy. These murmurs are, uh, are distinct from the venous hum, sometimes caused by engorged breast vessels during pregnancy, mammary suffol. Regurgitation, regurgitant murmurs represent retrograde or abnormal flow. Uh, due to mitral regurgitation, tricuspid regurgitation, ventricle septal defect into chambers that are the lower at lower resistance. They are typically holosystolic and at the end uh, at, uh, they are yes, they are typically holosystolic and tend to be louder with high velocity, low volume regurgitation or shunts, and softer with high volume regurgitations, regurgitation or shunts. Late systolic murmurs, which may or, or may not be preceded by a click, and click, huh, are typically of mitral valve prolapse or, or papillary, papillary muscle dysfunction. Various uh, maneuver, maneuvers are usually required for more accurate diagnosis of timing and type of murmur. I will put them in uh, this visual guide. Huh? Don't, don't forget to follow visual guide to uh, cardiac auscultation. Shunt murmurs, uh, shunt murmurs I originate, may originate at the site of the shunt, for example, uh, patient ductus ad, uh, arteriosus, ventricular septal defect, or result from altered thermodynamic remote from the shunt. For example, pulmonary systolic flow, murmur due to an atrial septal defect with left to right uh, so shunt. I will show now, I will try to show you systolic murmurs, ah, please. So the sixth beat is a ventricle premature beat, ventricle, VPAB, ah, ventricle premature beat. The seventh uh, the beat illustrates post-ventricle premature beat poten uh, potentiation of the murmur due to increased left ventricle filling during post-ventricular premature, uh, premature beat. Okay, let's try. Aortic stenosis murmur. Once again, aortic stenosis murmur. So diastolic murmurs. Diastolic murmurs are always abnormal. Most are early uh, or my diastolic, but they may be late diastolic, presystolic. Early diastolic murmurs are typically due to aortic regurgitation or pulmonic regurgitation. My, uh, mid diastolic or early to mid diastolic murmurs are typically due to mitral stenosis or tricuspid stenosis. A late diastolic murmurs, uh, murmur may be due to rheumatic mitral stenosis in a patient in a sinus rhythm. A mitral or tricuspid murmur due to an atrial tumor or thrombus may be uh, evanescent uh, and, may, and may vary with position and uh, from one examination to the next um, the next because the position of the intracardiac mass changes. Uh, continuous murmurs occur throughout the cardiac cycle. They are always abnormal, indicating a constant shunt flow throughout systole and diastole. They must be due to various cardiac defects. Also put them, I'll also put them in a visual guide to this cardiac auscultation program. Some uh, defects produce a thrill M many are associated with signs of the right of right ventricle hypertrophy and left ventricle hypertrophy. As pulmonary artery resistance increases in shunt lesions, the diastolic component gradually decreases. When pulmonary and, syst and uh, when pulmonary and systemic resistance equalize, the murmur may disappear. Patent the ductus arteriosus uh, patent uh, patent uh, ductus arteriosus murmurs 
are loudest at the second intercostal space just below the medial and, uh, of the l and medial end of the left clavicle. Aortico-pulmonary aortico window murmurs are central and heard at the third intercostal uh, space level. Murmurs of systematic, uh, systemic arteriovenous fistulas are best heard directly of the, of the lesions. Those of pulmonic arteriovenous fistulas and pulmonary artery branch stenosis are more diffuse and, uh, throughout, and, uh, and hard throughout the chest. Okay, now let's listen. Patent ductus arteriosus murmurs. This was patent ductus arteriosus murmurs. Thanks a lot. When circulation is increased, as occurs during pregnancy, anemia and hyperthyroidism, a continuous venous hum is often heard in the right supraclavicular fossa. This venous hum also occurs normally in children. The sound generated by increased flow in a, in a dilated internal mammary artery, so mammary suffle, may be, may be mistaken for a continuous cardiac murmur. Mammary suffle is a typically hard burst over the breast and the level of the right and or left second or third intercostal space. And although then, and although often classified as continuous, is usually louder during systole. Pericardial friction rub is caused by movement of inflammatory adhe 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 adhesions, adhesions between visceral and parietal pericardial layers. It's a high pitched or Squeaking sound, it may be systolic, diastolic, and systolic, or triphasic. When atrial contraction accent, uh, accentuated, accentuates the diastolic components during the during lay diastole. The rub sounds like pieces of leather uh, squeaking as they are rubbed together. Rubs are best heard with the patient learning forward or, or on hands and knees with breath held in expiration. Let's try to hear pericardial function, uh, friction, friction wrap. Friction wrap, okay? Please, once again. Fine. So once again, please, once again, huh? split first heart sound. Split first heart sound, please. Okay, now pulmonary ejection click, please. Pulmonary ejection click once again. Split second hard sound. In. Out. In. Out. In. Once again, in. split second heart sound. In. Out. In. Okay. Split second heart sound in left bundle branch block once again. In. 
once again, huh? Okay, it was split second hard sound in left bundle branch block. Now split second hard sound in the right bundle branch block. In, out, in, out, in, out. Mm -hmm. Okay. Once again. Okay, it was split uh, second hard sound in right bundle branch block. Now split second hard sound with atrial septal defect. Out. In. Not good quality, huh? but once again split second hard sound with atrial septal defect. Third heart sound. Gallop. Third heart sound, okay. Uh, please, once, once, yes, uh, third time. Third heart sound. Okay. Now force hard sound. Once again, force hard sound. Huh? Force S four. Yes, once again. Okay. Summation gallop. Summation gallop once again. For gallop once again, please. For me. Dust lick knock. Dust lick knock. Mitral valve opening snap. Once again, opening snap, mitral valve. Aortic stenosis murmur. Very, very during atherosclerosis, huh? aortic stenosis, murmur. Great. Palmonic stenosis, murmur. In. 
out in out once again palmen extenosis murmur Fine. Mitral regurgitation murmur. Excellent once again. It was mitral regurgitation murmur. Please mitral regurgitation murmur once again. Great. Ventricle septal defect murmur. Once again, please. Ventricle, ventricular, sorry, ventricular septal defect murmur. Great. Patent ductus arteriosus murmur, murmurs. Great and wrap up oh, maybe pericardial friction wrap. Pericardial friction wrap, please once again. Great. So, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thanks for your attention. See you in another, in other lectures, but don't forget to follow visual guide to this uh, cardiac auscultation. Bye. God bless you.